All right, guys, uh, welcome to the second Peace Minds video, and we'll pick up right where we left off. Uh, we'll sort of backtrack a little bit. Um, we saw Bridge earlier. We we're going to look at uh, Extrude, which um, operates actually a little bit differently from the Extrude that you're used to. So T-Extrude generally in this by default actually works on faces, not edge curves or curves like that. Uh, what it does is if I pick a face like this, uh, an orthogonal face, what it does is this, um, which is a little, a little bit strange, I think, probably for most people. Um, and it's actually kind of used to add detail uh, in many ways to you know, a local surface. So what it does. Um, but in many ways, it's actually similar. Um, the if I try to run the sort of uh, edge version version of this, then you'll see that actually it does things sort of like this way, where it basically kind of adds a tier of edge curves. Um, and actually, functionally, in many ways, there's a shortcut to do this sort of uh, extrusion command, where you basically hold down the Alt key while you're dragging. So hold down the Alt key and then drag. So you'll see that I'm actually adding more detail. I'm adding more subdivisions to this, right? Or if I basically, in this case, you know, if I kind of select, not this, but a series of edge curves, and I Alt drag, well, that's actually wrong. Um, if I use a face version and I or Alt drag, that basically is a um, similar or kind of is the equivalent of the extrusion command. So this face, for example, if I hold down the Alt key and I drag it, um, would be equivalent to me using the um, extrude, extrude command. Uh, remember what we saw earlier about the sort of dragging these surfaces and how they kind of affect, you know, two sections uh, beyond. So in this case, I'm like kind of trying to make a straighter, let's say, extrusion. Um, then I would kind of leave this sort of where it is, right? Um, and I'll drag it again. So at that point, you would get a much sort of tighter um, extrusion curve. And if you actually want more, then you just kind of actually do that again. And you get an almost perpendicular cylinder, right? So you'll see that actually, you know, to actually get something that's more perpendicular out of this, you, know, you actually have to do this sort of all drag three times almost to get a very direct and you know more controllable um, radius. So after you do that, obviously you can actually go back. You change to edge mode, you can actually go back and move this down. So you'll see that now, like by having enough of these sort of edge loops, right? Um, then I'm actually be able to very much more tightly kind of control the curvature of these edge loops. So I can move this up so it flattens out on the top. Um, this is sort of like the middle loop, so it doesn't actually affect it too much, but you know, if I really wanted to get this radius really tight, then I could kind of really try to move this down a lot more or add, insert, basically, um, another edge loop around there, right? So this is uh, kind of what it would be uh, used for. You know? So you can use this method to extrude. Or even if I eventually, you'll see with this example, what we would do um, is eventually delete some of these faces. Now, if I delete the center face, it actually does this. Um, it will actually sort of balloon out into a more or less kind of proper um, cross section hole that looks like this. Now I'm going to do these oh, edge mode. And you don't necessarily have to follow these. This is just more or less for demonstration. Okay, 
Okay. So with this, right, if I, whoops, not that guy, but I'm trying to kind of select this edge loop, right? Um, alt, drag, alt, drag, and I want to kind of get a tighter control radius here. So select that and kind of push it down a little bit. So you'll see that this is like very kind of adjustable. Push that down. Okay. All right, so we get a like sort of chimney-ish thing. Um, if you wanted to, obviously, like these sort of outer boundary curves, you can kind of move them uh, to get them tighter. Although in this case, I would actually probably select them all. Uh, use the scale manipulator to actually get them larger or smaller. To kind of do that. If you wanted to spread this out. Okay, so that's the um, extrude. It both works in this sort of 2D method to, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a sort of different way of you know, adding more detail, um, more control detail, um, both this way and in the sort of extruding a face uh, sort of version. All right. Uh, the next command, fill hole. Um, does what it think you think it does. Yes, fill hole. Um, select edges on the border of a hole to fill. So if I go back to this, like I had earlier, and I basically try to select all these, get it well. You'll see that this gets plugged up, although not in the previous method. Like it just sort of gets filled up perpendicular. So you'll see um, this fill hole. It automatically plugs it up just like that. All right, that's not I want what I want here. Um, okay. Um, however, in the case that you know, for example, we saw earlier when you know I deleted one of these faces, and you got this really weird thing going on. And okay, you know, crap, you know, you want to fix it. Actually, this would revert it. So. Yes, fill hole, and if I click on any of the edges that's bounding the hole, it kind of reverts its topology to what it was before you deleted the document. Okay, so it can kind of, it can kind of help save you somehow. All right, the next one is crease. Um, the TS crease command actually is pretty fun. Um, it works better on these types of uh, sur surfaces. TS, whoops, TS crease. So T spine edges uh, to crease. So, like for example, on the edge loop, because we had pulled this out earlier, so I'm going to select. One, two, three, and four. All right, so it loops around a little bit. Enter. And so you, you see it makes it into a sharp edge. And then after that, it tapers out. So these four edges that I picked become sharp, or it turns a crease corner. All right? Um, I can highlight these now. And let's see, I can go down. You know, I can make. This crease. Pretty cool. Um, you kind of have to consider what's around it, though, um, in some cases. So, and you'll see that like, in my case, I just tend to not use these icons. I just tend to kind of remember. So, and you just do so these two. Um, nothing happens in this case until you actually pull it out, right? Um, and you'll get this, essentially, where the crease is sharp up to here, but then it tries to merge into a flat surface, but not quite, and you get a weird kink in it, so, you know, because uh, this edge is increased, you know. Uh, if you post-crease it, you know, if I add the crease to these two again, then it will 
to the even now. You know, so you have to kind of uh, probably the, the crease just like works generally um, in situations where you have enough room to kind of let it smooth out across, you know, let's say multiple uh, topology faces or topology sections. Um, and this actually, uh, funnily enough, um, this actually is a language that came from, well, the industrial language that came from the BMWs of a certain era um, where they had all these like, you know, crease lines. Um, um, you know, the, the sort of specific area uh, era of the BMW styling that had these sort of crease lines, the flame surfacing crease lines there in the quarter panel. Um, that was uh, popularized by Chris Bangle, uh, the design director at BMW at the time. Um, these sorts of things, right? And actually, that is a big effect of like what we're uh, actually, in a way, kind of new to the design software, um, similar to this method. So, um, this is a kind of interesting side of how software capabilities affected you know, design artifacts of its time. Okay, so that's. Hmm, crease. Okay, so match. Uh, that's what this is for. So you needed to. I've extruded this out. You know, I had a couple sections here. Um, so you have a chimney, and you have a cross section that you're trying to match to. So TS match basically asks you for the T line border edge loop to change. So an angle. This is the edge loop that I want to change. Enter. Edge is a curve to match to. This is the curve I want to match to. And, and you, it kind of gives you the display of how it will try to match. It does that. So it basically kind of pulls you know, um, the edge curves or edge loops to um, a profile curve that you drew in advance. And so this is super useful, uh, especially when you're trying to get like very specific dimensions onto things. Like as you can see, the way you model here is eh, it's not very, you know, um, dimensionally accurate. But you can actually use edge loops like these to kind of force it um, every now and then. Now what's nice is that you know, for example, if I took this guy um, and I rotated it, for example, a bit, move it. Way like that okay, so TS match still works. Um, this again, okay, enter match over, right? So that actually still works. You know, that's uh, so you can actually modify this or change its location, actually use it to kind of help you, um, in, in some ways, kind of more accurately move uh, things around or match to specific profiles. Um, working with edge loops, and especially in terms of these sort of tubular structures, is actually quite fun because you know if I alt drag, if I take this and I alt drag, just for fun, let's ignore matching that, right? Um, and Simply, you know, in, in many cases, simply by kind of selecting the whole edge loop um, and, you know, let's say using the rotation manipulator, I can that, right? Or going back to the translate, move this around, and all of this sort of adapts at the same time. Um, and if I wanted to, let's say, make this these two sections a little bit skinnier, select them together, right? Um, scale, well, actually, yeah, actually do them one by one. Select one edge loop, use the scale manipulator. I can squeeze them or make them fatter, right? So squeeze them tighter. Okay. 
go back to the translate. Profiles, bit. Later. you know, so you can actually do a fair bit of have a fair bit of variety, a sort of organic model. Play around. You know, so that would kind of be uh, weird. Oblet head, or you could kind of make a, a chess piece, um, but you know you kind of see how that works. So match is good for trying to match to very specific profiles, right? Pipe. So pipe uh, is actually one of my kind of fun commands. I like it a lot. This is a curve that I drew. These two kind of curves or arches. Uh, they intersect? I don't remember. Okay, they do. Um, they actually intersect at, if I selected them all together. I drew them such that they would cross and intersect at these points. So, you see. so um, if I select all these together, ES pipe. This. Um, and, you know, you can kind of set how many segments uh, you have overall. So curve center point, uh, I'm trying to select that one in the middle. And how many segments uh, for this? I don't want too many, so let's say eight. Right, so that kind of cuts the number of segments down. So each of these you can you know, kind of control the density of how many segments you want. I mean, honestly, these really don't that many. I'm just going to do eight. And you actually, you can select them all together, change them all together if you want to do that. Just sort of going through the process. Um, enter. And then these are these radiuses are set to one by default. However, you'll see that like you know, in a joint like this, um, if I click on the blue circle, I can make one larger individually, right? And then it changes the color. Um, or I'm going to um, run the command again. Segments. Just going to select all of them. Change this all to eight. Okay. Um, so these handles basically control the diameter or and actually the rotation of, of these sort of cross sections. So you can make the tail fatter or skinnier if you wanted to. Um, make the legs a little bigger. And uh, obviously, these are all things that you can actually kind of dial in um, if you wanted to, because you can type in the radius. So let me type in radius two. After clicking on it, you can just type in the radius two if you needed them to be a very specific radius. Um, so these you would probably want to move all together. So make this a uh, 0.5. Just click on them, type in one five point five. Um, if it's a crossing, you probably generally want it to be the same radius so you don't get something really weird. You can make this a fat dinosaur. So make this a four. <laughs> um, make maybe the tail end a three. 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 See what um, and you can actually add or remove these sort of handles. So select the point to add a handle there. Okay. Um, enter. Ooh. Pregnant dinosaur. Um, okay. Enter. Now it'll come up strange like this at first, and this actually gets us to the other topic. 
which is uh, um, the sort of display uh, method. Um, by default, T spines, especially with really complex, more complex surfaces like this, uh, T spines will kind of default to a display method that's called the sort of polygonal display method. And it's actually right here. Oh, here. So this is the smooth toggle. And you see when I click it, it moves it, changes it back to the smoother version that you're used to seeing. Right? Okay. So this is kind of because these types of surfaces are much harder to display or they, they basically kind of you know, heavier. Um, so sometimes both either for display or modeling surf purposes, um, you can kind of toggle between this and this. So this is the TS smooth toggle command so that actually manipulating certain things is easier as long as you kind of get to have a general idea uh, of what you're doing. Um, you know, so if I'm changing, you know, trying to change things around uh, edge mode, this, move the dinosaur's head, down over you know, just to kind of change its posture a little bit but if you want to kind of see what I actually did then you can move top of it back otherwise the sort of updating speed of these kinds of surfaces this is kind of okay because I have a pretty easy graphics card honestly um, like for some of your machines if they're not as powerful uh, this can be a slow process to kind of make these sort of more minor. So, yeah, that's a big fat pregnant dinosaur. Okay. Give it a. Do a. Uh, do the end. Give it a hump or two. Okay. Anyways, um, yeah. Big dinosaur. So that's how the the pipe command works. Now, this actually, and this is why I provided this. Um, this is a curve network that I derived from Grasshopper, you know, using a Voronoi, 3D Voronoi cell. And then um, I removed the duplicate lines for the next instance. So, yeah. I removed all duplicate lines. Um, if you guys don't know this, this is what you kind of need to know right here under the selection buttons. Um, the die, select all duplicate objects. So if you have lines that are overlapping, you know, um, I know lines, whatever. I just drew a couple that are overlapping, you know. When I selected, there are two overlapping curves there. Um, select dupe or this selects duplicate objects and allows you to delete the duplicate objects. So there's nothing. This probably is not a cell. <laughs> but basically, that's what it does. Um, so it's very useful. Now for these sort of networks, you don't want any duplicate lines kind of over, overlapping in the same place. So that's why. Uh, so I do this, yes, pipe, and it's going to think for a while. Okay, this, these radiuses, probably way too large. So radius, let's say root 0 0.4. That's more reasonable. Right, and you know, then you kind of see in there. Like, do we need this many segments? Maybe we don't. So segments. Select these all. Enter when done. Oops. Wrong. Segments. Center points. So instead of eight, you know, let's just do four. Okay. And there are a couple of different like, 
joints and whatever. You can mess around with that. All right, so you'll see that by default, the preview of it is going to be the Foxy preview, um, the Foxy Lattice preview. I have to toggle the smooth visualization, you know, think for a while because, like you said, like I said, this is a kind of a fairly heavy visualization method, or it's a fairly heavy one, and it takes a while for it to kind of you know, update. But yeah. So it does these sort of complex uh, exoskeletal networks. Where this is this, um, so one of the things you'll notice that because uh, T-spine surfaces are sort of its own idiosyncratic thing, um, if you have a Rhino file that's saved with a T-spine surface in it and you don't have T-spines installed, you will not be able to open it, or like it won't show up. The, the T-spine surfaces won't show up. Um, so T-spine surfaces can only be edited as T-spine surfaces. Um, that's why uh, there is a convert um, nerves file uh, convert to T-spines, uh, convert to T-spines uh, command. Um, so, or convert to Rhino nerves, right? So, if for example, you'll see that because in Rhino these sort of topologies are crazy, um, they're not possible. So, if I take this guy and I here and right click, right, this is converting it to this, and you'll see what I'm getting is now these are Rhino surfaces. So, like if you type what, it'll say Rhino policy. So, this is no longer a T-spine surface, um, uh, and it's no longer editable by T-spines. This is Rhino surface, Rhino poly surface. If I explode it, you'll see that it's broken up into its constituent Rhino single surfaces. Right. So this is kind of moving from T-spines into Rhino, sort of reverse engineering it into nerve surfaces. Although it loses its sort of like overall one surface quality. And that's where actually this is. This is the Rhino polysurface version of this T-spines curved network. Okay, so, um, you know, I showed a couple of simple, real simple examples of some commands that I like to kind of play around with. There's obviously a lot more um, for you to explore uh, on your own a little bit. But um, so the lab exercise um, for this week um, is due at the beginning of next week. Uh, it's for you guys to basically um, go choose from one of these links. Um, so here, here. These are sort of official T spines tutorials. Uh, we nung cha, the sort of mud, right? Most of these are fairly simple. Maybe try not to do something too complicated like a car because it'll take much longer. Um, but choose some of these like relatively simple examples like a bottle or some debris, uh, whatever you're really interested in. Uh, there are some actually slightly longer, and you can kind of like take a look at how how long some of these are. But some of these are kind of fun. Uh, these longer webinars, um, these recorded webinars where they say, "Let's." Learn to model a surface. Actually, some of these are case studies. Yes, uh, um, kind of show these like crazy organic stuff, how they do it. Um, but what we're asking you to do is essentially pick one of these. Um, some of them are shorter, some are longer, but just you know, pick one to model. Now, this training guide thing is also another uh, alternative or that you can choose from. Um, oops. Okay. So the training guide has a couple examples as well. Click on it, um, you'll see. So each page or each one has some more duplicates, like you saw before. It basically kind of has these uh, the steps that you would use uh, mapped out for you one to one. 
some of them actually have. Um, if you look at, you know, this is a RAR file. Some of them actually have templates um, or beginning geometry for you to start out with. So if there's a curve in there, then there's a curve that they provide that, that you can start with. So a heart ring, rings, sort of a um, architecture of surface form. Uh, R letters, all sorts of things. Chair, bathtub. This actually is cool because it uses a symmetry command that allows you to um, model one side and have the other side sort of just duplicate itself. Yeah. So take a look at these. Uh, pick one that you want to try out and just like attempt it. And that's that's your sort of experience really in terms of like getting some hands-on exercise with the teach lines. Um, you know, I really like the, you know, for example, I've mentioned I really like the bridge command, uh, especially donuts. <laughs> um, so topology, remember, is important. So, you know, for example, I'm trying to sort of bridge between these donuts. And so I have to kind of actually have to map out, let's say, you know, if I'm using the bridge command, you know, what faces are going to be merged or want to be merged. Um, so like if I'm trying to merge these two, then I would say, okay, you know, those two faces want to match those two faces. So when I do the bridge, then selecting these two and these two, bridge against, right? Um, Okay, so you know it actually kind of requires a little bit of like careful positioning and planning to actually pull this off, right? Um, but you, know, you, you especially with things like this, like the kind of getting the topology to match, kind of knowing what works in this in a way. It has its own idiosyncrasies, its own idiosyncrasies. Um, so just kind of getting used to the way that it may take a little bit of time because it's so different from you're generally used to be modeling in Rhino or any normal NURBS modeling program. Oh, and uh, actually one last command that I like a lot as well, that I forgot to mention, is, um, you know, let's take a look, do some edits to this. This. Um, ES thicken. So, P spline to thicken, and actually, so you'll see it took my sort of two D plane, turned it into a three D object. So now I can, for example, use this as a basis to uh, start manipulating. It into a much more complicated shape. Uh, so what's really great about that is that you can kind of use a simpler um, beginning, sort of a 2D-ish planar diagram, right? Planar object, like the one we just saw before, and actually use that to kind of convert it into something that eventually gains volume as you kind of model. So in some ways, this actually is a fairly uh, Effective, or maybe in some ways easier to do without modeling a more complex shape, um, much more complex thing than let's say making primitives and then kind of trying to bridge between them. Um, this is for us in some ways it actually might be to work with. Yeah. So TS thicken takes the two D plane or two D planar um, T spline surfaces and just Blows them up into a balloon, almost a thin shell balloon. Um, and yeah, it's really good. So, see, you can start to do some really, really interesting organic shapes.
Okay. All right. Um, that's it. Have fun. And we'll see you in the next one.